This is Twit. We have a mystery botnet um, that's got a lot of people wondering what's going on. It's a new IoT botnet that's being, consi- it's being called the Vigilante botnet, which has been growing rapidly. It was first spotted in October of last year, of 2016. Um, it's also known as the uh, Hey Jimmy, H-A-J-I-M-E-H. Hey Jimmy. Hey Jimmy botnet. Hey botnet. Uh, what's, what's puzzling people is that it is extremely well designed and sophisticated with a robustness and feature set that surpasses its overtly malicious rivals uh-huh. like the Mirai botnet, for example. It is expending a huge amount of effort to infect other IoT devices. But unlike Mirai, once Hey Jimmy affects <laughs> uh, an IoT device, it closes the back doors behind itself, mm. securing those devices it has infected against further attacks. It blocks access to ports 23, 7547, 555, and 5358, which are known to be the most widely used vectors for infecting IoT devices. Mm. And thus, at least temporarily, it sanitizes that device in its wake. But rather than using the more common fixed command and control server architectures that we've been talking about, Hey Jimmy employs a decentralized peer-to-peer network to issue updates to infected devices, making it far more difficult for the botnet to be taken down. I would argue impossible by anyone. And what's also strange is that when infected devices are also equipped with display terminals. Every 10 minutes or so, it displays a signed message describing its creators as, quote, just a white hat securing some systems. Uh, yeah. And then it says important messages will be signed like this. Hey, Jimmy, author, contact closed, stay sharp. Uh-huh. And it's like, okay. Uh-huh. So, um, unlike Mirai and other IoT botnets, Hey Jimmy lacks DDoS (laughs) capability. You've adopted my pronunciation. (laughs) Hey Jimmy. Hey Hey, Jimmy. Hey Jimmy. Hey, come on over, Jimmy. Lacks DDoS capabilities and other hacking skills uh, or capabilities, except for the propagation code that lets one infected IoT device search for other vulnerable devices and then infects them. Kaspersky's security researchers noted that, quote, the most intriguing thing about Hey Jimmy (laughs) is its purpose. (laughs) While the botnet, it never gets old, while the botnet (laughs) is getting bigger and bigger, now we're talking 300,000 infected devices at this point, by the way. Wow, that system has a big network. A third of a million, partly due to new exploitation modules. So it's evolving also. Its purpose remains unknown. Kaspersky says we haven't seen it being used in any type of attack or malicious activity. Its real purpose remains unknown. And Radware's write-up provided some additional interesting technical details. They said the distributed bot network used for command and control and updating is overlaid as a traceless torrent on top of the well-known public BitTorrent peer-to-peer network using dynamic info hashes that change on a daily basis. All communications through BitTorrent are signed and encrypted using RC4 with public and private keys. The current extension module provides scan and loader services to discover and infect new victims. The efficient SIN scanner implementation scans for open ports on TCP port 23 and TCP 5358, 
Upon discovering open telnet ports, the extension module tries to exploit the victim using brute force shell login, much the same way Mirai did. For this purpose, Hey Jimmy uses a list consisting of the 61 factory default passwords from Mirai and adds two new entries, root slash root is the uh, username, five up is the password, and admin as the username and five up as the password, which are factory defaults for Atheros wireless routers and access points. In addition, Hey Jimmy is capable of exploiting Eris modems using the password of the day backdoor with the default seed as outlined here. Hey Jimmy does not rashly follow a fixed sequence of credentials from Radware's honeypot log it logs. The, uh, they were able to conclude that the credentials used an exploit change depending on the login banner of the victim. I mean, this thing is top drawer. In doing so, Hey Jimmy increases its chances of successfully exploiting the device within a limited set of attempts to avoid the system account being locked out or its IP being blacklisted for a set amount of time. Radware also suggested that the flexible and extensible nature of the Hey Jimmy botnet would allow it to be used for malicious purposes, including conducted real-time mass surveillance from internet-connected webcams. However, since Hey Jimmy has no persistence mechanism, as soon as the infected device is rebooted, it goes back to its previously unsecured state with default passwords and the telnet port open to the world. Now, there's no evidence of this, but I wouldn't be at all surprised if this is, I mean, I would be happy in a way if this was the NSA. That is, here we have a situation where Mirai brought down Dyn DNS last year because so many of these IoT devices were infected that 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 a hugely powerful what was it it was 600 gig or something a ridiculous amount of traffic w was able to be generated so now along comes a botnet which you cannot take down that uses high end torrent encrypted uh, BitTorrent system uh, intercommunication with rotating password of the day seed based passwords that protects the devices it infects from subsequent infection, um, stays in RAM, doesn't hurt them, doesn't destroy them, but takes them essentially out of service and is due to its its architecture incredibly hard to kill this feels like a well i mean and and at the same time <laughs> is a massive surveillance network should the owner of this network choose to exploit these iot devices we, we've never seen any evidence of this and, and you know examine reverse engineering of the implant demonstrates all it does is rapidly find other vulnerable devices, presumably those that have been recently rebooted and reinfects them, them with it as you know before anybody else can find them in order to essentially cleanse this otherwise very worrisome IOT install base of this latent problem. Uh, this to me, this feels like a, a state actor who's uh, solving this IOT problem for us. So does it give you any clues that Hajime is <laughs> Japanese? It's the first name of a boxing manga series, comic book series, Hajime no Ippo. Well, and, and I don't know who named it. So, you know, ah. so, so, uh, 
But yeah, maybe they so, saw that text string in there or something like that. Could be. I, I did not okay. uh, find any reference to where the name came from. Anybody in the chat room speak Japanese? Does Hajime mean anything in Japanese? Hmm. Oh, I do know what it meant because I looked it up this morning when I, when I got the pronunciation. But uh, I don't know. I, I like, hey, Jimmy. Hey, Jimmy. <laughs> oh, hey, Jimmy. How are you? Good to so, see you. Yeah. 